Well, good morning and welcome to a new month here on Fickle Farms. As you can see behind me, there's another car parked in the in the driveway, and that means Mrs. Fick has made her way down here to Alma, Missouri. Uh, good news, apparently the condo has been sold. She hasn't let me see the check yet, so I am anxiously awaiting uh, to find out how much we actually made from that sale. Hopefully that will help uh, put a little bit of money back into the farm to uh, get us catapulted. I gave her a quick tour as well of the farm. She loves it. She was a little disappointed that I cultivated that first field, something about... Uh, soil preservation or something along those lines anyway she encouraged me to make an appointment for this afternoon down at the local farm service agency so i've done that and apparently they're going to give me a little bit of a tutorial on some agricultural practices so that ought to be interesting as well but first on the plate this morning we need to get some lime on that new field that we harvested last month um, and get that ready for planting there's two fields we need to get planted today and uh so yeah, let's get into it. That is a wrap on lime for this season. Very exciting. Uh, I'm going to hustle this back. I did notice this tractor actually is a little underweight when this um, uh, when this fertilizer spreader is full, lime spreader is full, it, uh, it does tip a little bit if, if you hit uh, an upslope just right. So it's going to be something we might need to take a look at and think about. Um, it's not the end of the world, but we certainly won't be able to take this on some of the hillier fields, I wouldn't think. So something to keep in mind. Okay, so I got the cedar pulled out, everything's topped up, we're ready to go. You know, I was I was looking and uh, thinking about uh, planting this barley in here. I think that's what I had originally talked about. In talking with Mrs. Fick, she suggested rye as a potential cover crop, uh, that it, it grows really well down here in Missouri, and uh, having done a little bit of research into that, uh, she's right. So I actually think I'm gonna plant rye instead, so Let's get this switched over to rye and get to planting. Okay, so that's the first headland done. Just want to come back here and check my work real quick. pH perfect, nitrogen perfect. Rye is growing. Very good. I think we're, we are in good shape. This seems to be working well. I'm glad we're doing rye. That that uh, seems like a wise choice. Good suggestion, Mrs. Fick. Can always be counted on. Um, yeah, this tractor is a little underpowered. <laughs> <laughs> for the upslopes, I'm not gonna lie. I was I was struggling there on the uh, far side of the field here, but uh, nonetheless, we're gonna keep going and uh, get this field planted. See? Sweet 
Excellent. Made it through the field without needing to reload. That's always a good feeling. Boy, doesn't that look beautiful. Let's stop. We need to, we need to stop and appreciate for a moment. Yeah. So nice. So pleasing. Perfect. I'm really glad we did ride. This is going to be great. Going to be great. All right, so I'm going to go back to the farmyard here. We're going to refill this thing, top this thing off, and then we're going to keep on going. Head down to that other new field that we bought and uh, get that planted with rye as well. Okay, let's check our work. It's always good after the first headland, I think, to check our work. Looks great. Perfect. It's planting. Got a great yield potential. I am curious. I don't know. If anybody else knows this, please let me know. I, How is this tractor, which does not have the crop nitrogen sensors on it, how does it know what to automatically increase the nitrogen to? I really thought that that was the purpose of precision farming. Maybe it's some glitch or mod conflict, I don't know. But if you know, drop a comment, let me know, or send me a message or something, because that I, I am genuinely curious about that. I have not seen that before, so very curious. All right, well, nonetheless, I'm not going to argue with it, and so we're going to keep going and get this field planted. Actually, turn the time speed. You might have noticed up to five x because we're making great time. I don't want to adjust the time too much, but I'm I'm still trying to figure out what the what the uh, what the right makeup is going to be. So uh, by makeup, I mean timing. Like, what's the right pacing for these videos? So. Anyways, we're still experimenting with that. I'm going to jog this back, and then I think we're going to have to figure out a roller, because the, these fields do need to be rolled, and it looks like there are some weeds growing, so at some point, um, we're going to have to get a, a weeder as well, so I might let the first stage of weeds come in before I make that decision and see, what, uh, see what's needed. Okay, so I spent a little bit of time just cleaning up the farmyard a little bit. I wanted to move everything, all of the the seeds and chemicals, over into that uh, that steel shed over there, uh, just so it's out of the weather. Especially now that we're done planting uh, for the year and pretty much done with our field work, it made more sense to do that. I do plan to dedicate that building mostly to our grass equipment, which we will need at some point. Speaking of which, we should probably drive down and check on how our grass is doing. Let's do that real quick. Here we are then. Well, not bad. It looks good. The nitrogen does look a little bit more all over the place. Well, it seems okay, actually. Expected yield looks good. 99%. 23% there. Hmm. Interesting. Cool. Alright, it's growing. Probably going to let it grow for a little while before we actually harvest it. 
um, which is only going to delay our cattle operation a little bit longer, which is unfortunate, but I don't want to buy cattle without a means to feed them, and I know there's still a little bit of food left in the barn, but we'll see. We'll see how the month drags on. Okay, so what we need to do now is buy a roller. Let's have a look. Okay, so for twenty-two fifty, we could buy three of these. Um, I don't remember how wide these are with three of them, but we can use both attach points here to basically uh, to basically have a nice working width. So let's do that. Let's buy three of these for twenty-two fifty. Gotta go get him. Okay, there then. Okay, so it looks like the one I need to hook up with is here on the left. So let's get that one first. We'll see if we can wrangle the others into position. All right, there we go. All hooked up. Now, because these are passive rollers, there's no way to um, there's no way to pick them up off the ground. So unfortunately, when we drive on public roads. Maybe rolling. Which is why we get that you don't have access to this land. There we go. Yep, so I'm gonna get these back and we're gonna roll those two fields. Okay, so we made it back to the field relatively unscathed. I had to do a little bit of uh, creative maneuvering around fellow citizen of Alma, but uh, we're going to jump right into this field and get rolling. She's got me guessing about a present, gonna be her birthday soon, but a four-star dinner ain't no real big winner, cause she likes to eat at the Greasy Spoon, flowers in her thing, it's too early for a rain, she don't like to wear perfume. Says, take me to the speedway, East Tennessee Way, Sunday afternoon. Let's go to the racetrack, watch those engines run. That's all she wants to do, it's her way of having fun. She loves the noise and loves the boys going round and round. Let's go to the racetrack, cause she don't like downtown. Na 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 too loose and getting in the groove, cutting tires and gas and go. So much info and race car lingo that I just don't know. Junior, Ryan, Matt, and Kyle, she can't get enough. It's a four hour ride through the countryside and man, she's all jacked up. Let's go to the racetrack. Watch those engines run. That's all she wants to do. It's her way. All right, last pass on this field, right as it starts to rain. Perfect timing. And just looking at the time, it's it's lunchtime. So I'm going to wrap this up, park this in the farmyard, and then hop in and say hello to Mrs. Fick, grab a bite, quick bite to eat before my 1 o'clock meeting down at the FSA. It's time for lunch. Well, that was delicious. Always nice to see Mrs. Fick, too. I double-checked the radar while I was in there, and uh, it looks like it's going to rain till about mid-afternoon, so this is going to work out perfectly, actually. So let's hop in the truck, pick up, and uh, drive on downtown to the FSA, and uh, we'll have that 1 o'clock meeting, and we'll see what the weather looks like when we get back. We might need to hold off getting back into that second field. Oh. Uh until the rain stops. I certainly don't want to get the tractor stuck. That would not be good. So, see you in a few minutes. All right, let's snag a parking spot here. I'd like to park a little bit closer, but I uh, didn't see anything out front. So, we'll just pull in here, take this one right here, and bye-bye. Alright, here we go. This ought to be interesting. 
Okay, well, that was a fantastic meeting. Uh, quite the education, I'll tell you what. I'm going to walk back to my truck here, and I'll, I'll talk as we head back to the farm. So, Cletus uh, gave me a great little overview of a couple of fantastic government programs that... Uh, that I could participate in that will that will should help the farm both in terms of preserving the natural resources of the farm and also uh, just to provide a little bit of extra cash flow so the first the first thing he sort of gave a broad overview about was I look where I'm going here make sure I don't hit anybody um, was this thing called regenerative agriculture maybe you all know about this I don't know but uh, there's uh, there's these six core principles of regenerative agri agriculture, and it, actually, it seems like we're already on a uh, on a good path. So the six core principles. Let me walk through them real quick. The first is understanding the context of your farm operation. Well, the context is I'm broke, and what little money we do have is spoken for for grass equipment and hopefully some future cows. So. So there, that's the context. I don't know what else to say. So everything has to be filtered, at least at this point, through that, through that lens. So uh, we're going to do what we can, but we got to have the money to do it. So the other one, minimize soil disturbance. So yeah, this is, this is making sure that we don't cultivate our fields, over-cultivate, over-plow, things like that. Okay, I think we could do that. Saves time, money, uh, gas, all those things. Uh, maximize crop diversity. Okay, so our plan, I walked him through it. I said we just just harvested some wheat in one field um, and, uh, and now have planted rye in both. He said that's fabulous because rye is a cover crop. And so the, the fourth point, fourth core principle, is keeping the soil covered. So we're already trending in the right direction there. Now, maintaining living roots year-round is going to be is going to be interesting. I don't know how well we're going to be able to do that, but I do think if we're not tilling up the soil and we're seeding directly into it like we did the other field this morning, that hopefully should help take care of itself. And then the sixth core principle, integrating livestock, is exactly what we plan to do. So, um, so that's great. We're I think we're already trending in the right direction. So, so that was really good to hear and. Um, it seems my intuitions about the direction to take this farm were the right ones, so that's fabulous. We are gonna become a regenerative farm in this town. They're actually looking for people to pilot these programs, so um, so that was fabulous, and there's some government grants to help with that, which will be great. The other program, real quick, I'll show you this brochure, is called the STAR program, which uh, I was not particularly familiar with, but it's basically a, uh, a government program that uh, assists farmers in, in, doing, in conserving their natural resources. And so by committing to these regenerative agricultural practices, we can... Um, we can essentially become a five-star farm um, is the goal eventually. So hopefully we'll get there. He said there was a, an, an app that I could download for my phone. So let's, let's take a look. Yeah, right here, environmental score. Look at this. They've already uploaded our farm. Well, that's not bad. 58, okay. Looks like a couple of our fields are doing all right. What's this field down here? 51. So we need a little bit more focus on this field to bring this score up. But basically, the, the point of the STAR program is to uh, incentivize farmers to uh, increase the, to, to basically participate in these environmental practices and get and get the farm and the fields um, um, up to snuff. And so this is great. We are going to focus on this and work on this. And as we integrate these regenerative agricultural practices, hopefully we'll see that environmental score increase. So I'm going to wait for the rain to stop here, I think, and then I'm going to hop back into the tractor and get, uh, get that second field rolled, and we'll go from there. Well, it looks like the last remnants of rain are starting to move through, so let's go ahead and go hop in the tractor. We can get the roller moved down to that field and get it ready. And I bet it's going to be a little sloppy, but, uh, but we'll have to make do. Here we are then. Well, I'm not going to waste any time getting into this field and getting this rolled. She loved the noise and loved the boys going round and round. Let's go to the racetrack because she don't like downtown. to the race.
racetrack. Watch those engines run. That's all she wants to do. It's her way of having fun. She loves the noise and loves the boys. And that is the last of our winter cover crops tucked in for the season. I feel like we're in a really, really good place. So I'm going to get these back. It was interesting, while I was um, rolling that field, I got a call from Cletus down at the FSA office, and he said that there are actually a couple of farmers, local guys, who could use a hand with some of their harvests tomorrow. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run these back and then um, probably call it a day for today. Well, that was another successful day here on Fickle Farms. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to pop in the house here, talk to Mrs. Fix, see if I can figure out how much we actually made on the sale of our condo and get our implements shuttled about Alma in order to be able to hit the ground running tomorrow. So thanks again for joining me. Like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. If not, if you're, if you're just lurking, that's cool too. Uh, you're welcome here. So I uh, will catch you all next time. Peace.